Hello and welcome to Darts Now. We are here at an undisclosed location in Lancashire. We've got a dartboard and that's all you need to play darts, which is what we're going to be doing today. Now, if you watched our old video a few weeks ago, check the link out up here, finding my perfect dart with Andy Cornwall. We thought, or well, we found out what goes into finding your perfect dart. But a lot of people always ask, does the more expensive dart you throw improve your performance? Well, today we have the world's most expensive dart. So we're going to be throwing that, we're going to be throwing the cheapest dart I've ever found and somewhere in the middle to see, does the more expensive dart make your performance get better? Now if you did see our video, again check it out up here, you'll know I am no professional so do not expect 180s or 9 darters but we'll see how each of them fly. So we've got these cheapest darts I could find from a charity shop, literally cost me 99p. And then we're going to take a look at these, which are, well, I won't spoil them yet, but they're a bit of a step up. These are a play of darts that they throw themselves. And then the world's uh, most expensive darts, the Elysians, they are called. And you can see how big the box is. You could probably get about 20 sets in here, but there's only one set and you will not find a more expensive dart than this. So let's take, let's take a look and see what these look like. So I got these from British Heart Foundation about three or four years ago and they cost me literally 99p. And I mean, have you ever seen anything like these? You, these are 1970s, very, very latest 1980s. They're brass darts, they're very, very light. And look at those flights, they're, they're turkey feathers. They're not even normal flights, so I'm a little bit scared to throw at them. I mean, we've only got half a turkey there. So how these are going to go, I have absolutely no idea. One of the stems is cracked, but for, you know, 90, we're talking 50, 60 years. I mean, these have withstood the test of time. I mean, look at these darts. They've got one cracked stem, brass darts, turkey feathers. That's proper old school darts, that proper darts. So now we've taken a look at them. Now I'm going to throw them. I'm a little bit wary about throwing these because if I group these darts well, which I can assure you is probably not going to happen, I could destroy the feathers. And these things have existed for 60 years and I come along and I'm just going to completely ruin them. But, I mean, the actual shape is almost like an Andrew Gildan dart. It's not too dissimilar to the dart that I got from Andy Cornwall at Darts Corner. Again, take a look. But if I just approach the hockey and I hold them up, there's actually a little bit of grip right on the bottom of the barrel and my thumb is just covering it. So... It's actually not that bad for me, and I'm a little bit scared that these are going to go so bad that these could be my match dart. But uh, we're going to have nine darts with them, and let's see what we can do. I'm expecting no miracles, but uh, let's have a look. I'm aiming for the 60, so if it goes in the 12, that's not what I'm aiming for. I mean that, I mean, you're talking about 17, 18 grams these darts are, which is so much lighter than what I'm normally normally thrown with. I mean, if you notice, if you look at the feathers there, they're a bit trimmed and inconsistent either side, which when, when I threw the first dart, it just dipped in the board. Uh, but we'll have another six and see, uh, see what they're like. I feel like, I mean, they're actually going relatively straight to be fair they're actually going pretty straight it's just they're going consistently low and i think that's because number one of, of the the feathers they've been worn away over time so they're not flying that great but two because they're so much lighter i mean these brass darts are light anyway but throughout the years they would have lost weight as people throw them and a bit of the metal erodes away that it's just something i'm so not used to but we'll have another three and what i'm going to do i'm going to try and release the dart a little bit earlier to try and get a little bit more height because they're going straight enough. So if we can get the height, it might actually not be too bad. Take them out one by one because like I said, I don't want to destroy these. Well, oh, well, correction, I've destroyed them. 60 years and I've got my hands on them and I've already, a turkey died for this. No turkeys were harmed in the making of this video, I'd like to add. Right, three more, let's make it a good one. I'm going to aim higher so i'm going to aim i'm going to aim for the big 20 and hopefully if they drop they drop into the 60. look at that i'm I actually went exactly where i was aiming oh well, we'll end it on a bullseye because i'm not getting past that 
you know, that's when you consider how cheap the dart is, there's a cracked flight, there's a turkey feather, uh, turkey feather flight, one flight that I've ruined. It's not, it's not that bad. 99p from a charity shop, it's not that bad. I mean, I can't throw with them all the time because they are inconsistent and you don't know where they're going to go. But I'm slightly impressed. Slightly impressed. So I'll put those away and then we'll move on to, these are a player that, a Phil Taylor darts. And we're appealing to our international audience there with German flights. In terms of a player darts, I mean, these are probably the creme de la creme. They retail at about 90 pounds. I know there's a couple of shade over a hundred now with Luke Littler, but these really are as good as you gotta get. And what goes into the dart is, if you look at the machine quality today with all the different sort of grips, and because these are target darts, you've got these Swiss points now. Now, I'm just gonna compare these two darts. If you look at the point here, and you'll see a lot of darts nowadays with this, if you wanna remove that point, you'll need to get a vise, clamp it in, brute force, pull it out, replace it. And it, you know, it's an absolute faff. It could take five or 10 minutes. Whereas nowadays, and this is quite a new technology, you get a little tool, you can put it in, unscrew it, replace the point, all within 60 seconds. I mean, it really is quite revolutionary. But these are Phil Taylor darts, Gen 7s. The shape is actually not too dissimilar. Um, because it's tungsten, and that's one of the main differences as well. That's brass, that's tungsten, about 90% tungsten. You can get 95% tungsten because the metal is denser. The barrel is thinner. So in theory, because the barrel isn't as thick as the brass, because of the tungsten, it's a denser metal, you should be able to group more in the 60 bed, which is why from the 80s to the present day, they change from brass to tungsten. Most darts are 90% tungsten, some are 95, and you can get 97% tungsten as well. You'll never get 100% because it's a very brittle metal, but around 90 to 95%, and that is why you see a lot of players nowadays scoring so heavily because the dart is much, much thinner. You do get some old school players like Dieter Hedman, for example, who have been playing for, what, since the 80s with quite thick barrels because that's what they're used to. But generally, you don't really find a lot of players with darts as thick as that anymore. So these are the darts that Phil Taylor threw with, 16 times champion of the world. I'm hoping they have the same effect on me as they did him. But at the very, very least, what I'm looking for is just a bit of consistency. The other darts weren't too bad, but they kept going low all the time, low, low, low. Now these flights aren't turkey feathers, they're, they're proper flights, probably about 100 microns thick they are. Um, and because the flights are consistent, they're not worn away, they should, in theory, touch wood, be consistently thrown. Now, if I just hold it out up here, I'm gripping it the same as the other one. And to be fair, like the brass one, you see, I'll just turn it a little bit. There's a bit of grip there right at the bottom, not so much at the top of the dart, but right at the bottom of the dart, there's a bit of grip, a bit of a ring grip like the other one. It's a bit, bit deeper than the brass darts, but they're not too dissimilar in that respect. And the shape is pretty similar. So it's amazing, isn't it? You know, 50, 60 years worth of darts and they all look fairly similar. You can certainly see similar characteristics, but let's see how they throw. They've got a bit of a longer point as well than the brass darts. Um, and we mentioned the Swiss point, but it's a little bit longer. And it's a little bit of grip on the point as well just on, on the point of the dart, it's a diamond grip. Now, because I rest my point on the dart, it just helps maintain a little bit of control over the dart. The brass one didn't have it, this one does. And because I rest my finger on it, it just means that it's not gonna slip off. I'm not gonna pull it then into the 12s or the 18s, in theory. In practice, we'll see how it goes. Like I said, I'm expecting these to not go low, low, low. I mean, some of the brass ones were then getting closer to the bullseye, so let's have a look. And that is not what I was talking about. But when you're throwing with different sorts of darts, I mean, these, I should have said, these are 26 gram darts. So generally darts nowadays are sort of between 21 and 23 gram darts. These ones are 26. So even by modern day standards, these are quite heavy and because brass isn't as uh, dense as tungsten those other ones were about probably 16 18 and they would have worn away over the years S 
So these ones now, even though they are a bit low of the 60, I feel like when I'm through, I mean, that's going for the ball, that's not a 60, by the way. I feel like I've got a lot more control over them. So even if they're not going where I want them to, I still feel like I've got full control over them. They're not going here, there and everywhere. Whereas with the other ones, they were going low, they were going left. You can see there were fish tailing in the air just because of the flights and because of the weight as well. Because when you're throwing 18 gram darts, if you're throwing lighter darts, one sort of jerk of the shoulder and they can be in someone's eye. But we'll have one more throw with them and I'm going to aim for the top wire of that 60 bed. I mean, there we go, you see, uh, the grouping is so much better. I'm not destroying these flights like I did with the other ones, but the key thing here that I'm looking at is the higher in the board. The other ones, no matter what I did, it seemed, they were just going about, what, two inches low of the target. And again, it's, it's just consistency. Because the, the dart wasn't consistent over the years, you know, I mean, those darts probably vary from individual darting weights because they would have eroded over time. The, the flights as well were beaten and battered. Whereas these, you get more consistent results. And no matter what level you're playing at, if you can throw consistently, that's how you're going to improve. And now we look at uh, the big boy darts. These are Target Elysian darts. These are limited edition. Only 200 sets of these have ever, ever been made. They retail at about £450. And they are not designed to be thrown. But guess what? We're going to throw them anyway. Let's have a look. Oh. Now, with most expensive things, the hardest part is getting into the box itself. So, it's like past the parcel trying to unwrap these things. Now, I've never thrown with these before, so the darts that you see on camera is the first time I've ever thrown these darts. It's like opening Pandora's box, this. I'm just hoping it starts inside. So you can see straight away these darts are 24.01 grams. So a couple of grams lighter than the Phil Taylor ones. But I mean, that is precision engineering. And again, I spoke about consistently getting every single dart exactly the same. That is what you need to be a better dart player. The more consistent darts you throw, the more consistently you can play. So I'll pop that to one side there. Here we go. These are the world's most expensive darts, Target Elysian's ninth generation. And there they are, Target Elysian's. I mean, you can see there the machinery of them. Each individual dart takes an hour in the machine to manufacture, which is a crazy amount of time for a dart. So when you consider that the first set of darts we threw were 99p from a charity shop. They were brass darts, they were all different weights, they were turkey feather flights. I mean, this is, I mean, I have never seen grip on a dart like that. There's three different grip patterns there. You've even got a little bit of tiny grip there on top of the Swiss point, like the Phil Taylor darts, these are made by Target. I mean, I have no idea what Eric and Jockey will be saying if they could see a dart like this. I mean, they they probably thought there wouldn't be a 450 pound set of darts within the next 50 years, but here we are. This is what darts is now, but do these darts perform better than the darts that Jockey, Eric, John Lowe were throwing? Well, we are about to find out. I said that these aren't designed to be thrown, but we like to break the rules. So we're going to have a look in the name of science. I've been nervous about throwing these. Like I said, they're not really designed to be thrown. I feel like I'm, I'm just chucking a million quid down the toilet, but I mean, I've never held anything like this. I mean, the machinery is just unbelievable. The grip patterns, I've never seen any dart before and I have held a lot of darts. If I just get it into the position that I'm throwing with. So if you look at how I grip this dart, I'm gripping it the same as I did the other two darts, but I'll just turn it there. Just where my thumb rests is where the grip pattern changes, which is going to be interesting actually, because it's, if I wanted to match that, it probably could do with being a little bit lower, but the difference between this dart and the other two darts 
is that this is a really, really aggressive grip on top. And the, the other two were smooth on top. So my, where my finger rests, is that where the really aggressive grip is. Now, on the one hand, it could help. My fingers aren't going to slip off that. There's no chance of that. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a weird thing throwing these darts. Like I said at the top of the show, the brass darts, turkey feather flights, proper British culture. And these are an absolute world away from that. Well, this is the first time I've ever thrown these Elysians. What a good start. I tell you what, let's go back to proper British culture. Get the brass darts back out. Oh, hang on, hang on, I'm warming. You know, I, I don't know how to describe it. Yeah, it actually feels a heavier dart. And the Phil Taylor ones. And the Phil Taylor ones are 26 grams. These are 24 grams. But I don't know whether it's just in my head. Like I said, to actually for mentally process, I'm throwing the world's most expensive dart. is It's ridiculous because darts are the working man's sport. But what I will say about these darts, though, that I do notice immediately is look how straight in the board they are. I mean, that one was a loose one. Forget that one. That was just me, that. But even that one, they're all dead straight in the board, which... Again, we talk about consistency. That's what you want. You want every dart going in at the same angle. But let's have a few more throws of them and let's see how they get on. Right, I'm going to aim for the top wire of the 60. Yeah. I mean, I've always been doing that. It's just they're not always gone there. I'm just going to move over slightly. Ooh. I mean, I, I, I am worried now. I am worried because what I don't want to do is come out of this video and these fly really, really well. Then I have to use these as my match dart because I don't have the bank balance for that. But again, it, I don't know whether it's just in my mind. They feel like they get to the board quicker. Um, why that is, again, that might, might just be placebo. But again, look at how straight those are in the board and the grouping as well. They're all about an inch with each other. Like I said, I am not a professional dart player. I average about 50. So they are flying so, so well compared to the other two. And the Phil Taylor ones I've thrown with for about two years. So the fact that, I mean, you saw what I scored with those. And then you see these ones, that's my second ever throw. And the grouping is good. The, the angle is consistent. I was skeptical about whether the more expensive that would be better. All the evidence so far, they're pretty good, but let's have one more throw of them. See if we can get a 180 to finish with. I mean, when that 60 went in, I had images in my head of 180s, nine darters, world championships. I'll tell you what, I mean, you are going to get loose darts with a play like me, but they're pretty, pretty good. I, I always felt with the other ones, when they are fishtail in the air, which is where they move like that, it can put you off mid-throw when you're going from dart to dart, it can put you off. These are dead straight, they're flying dead down the centre, I'm not distracted by anything else. That is my third ever throw with them. When you consider, like I said, the Phil Taylor ones, two years, my third ever throw. I was sceptical. You know what? This this might be the way forward. This might, we're moving away from that proper British culture into a new world of darts. If I threw with these for an hour, which I'm not going to do, I could get a 180 with these. If I threw with the Phil Taylor ones, I should get a 180 because I've been throwing them for two years. The other ones I've got no chance because there's just no consistency. One that can go in the 60, one that can go in the 12. And for once, it wouldn't actually be my fault because they're just not consistent equipment. You can't get a consistent score. But these ones and the Phil Taylor ones, top quality. So there we have it. We've thrown the cheapest out that I could find from 80s, maybe the 70s. The world's most expensive dart on one in the middle. These, you know what, to be fair, they perform better than what I thought these ones. Considering that they're turkey, turkey feathers, which I've now destroyed. The brass starts, the weights are all different. Apart from the going fishtail a little bit and going low, they weren't too bad. But these two, I mean, there's a reason why every modern dart player throws with a dart 90% and above. 
tungsten. I mean, the Phil Taylor ones there, I mean, I've been throwing with these for two years and they, they were more consistent, but the, the grouping wasn't really good. Sometimes if you looked at the angle of entry in the board, they were a bit skew with. Whereas these ones, the Target Elysians, £450 is what they are. A collector's item, only 200 in the world. I was a bit sceptical, to be honest. I just thought, you know, a player that is the one, just the way forward. Doesn't matter how much the dart costs. But considering that I've only had three throws ever with those darts, they were going consistently every single throw. The grouping was good. Always straight in the board. And that was the main thing for me, you know. It wasn't kicking to the right or kicking to the left. Every single one of those nine darts that I threw was straight in the board. So I didn't think there was anything on it. But you know what? Target Elysians, very, very impressive. But do leave a comment down below. What is your favourite darts? How many different darts have you tested? And what do you think is the way forward? And don't forget to stay tuned for darts now. Thank you for watching. Subscribe and leave a comment for more darting content.